2018, this time is 6.30 p.m., the regular meeting of the Greensburg Redevelopment Commission is called to order. At this time, if everyone would please silence your electronic devices, and then if everybody would stand, we'll begin the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To comply with Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the City requests that participants in this meeting complete a voluntary anonymous survey that is available on the table in the back of the room. Roll call. Darren, would you mind conducting a roll call, please? Kim Dornick. Here. Adam Winsell. Present. Dave Weigel. Present. Darren Covington. Here. And Jody Kaufman and Chan McLeod. Thank you. Approval of minutes of our July 19, 2018, regular meeting. I hope everybody's got a chance to review those. Are there any corrections to the minutes? If there are not any corrections, they stand approved as presented. First item of business on our agenda is update of project status for Veterans Way Phase 2. Mr. May, would you? Share that with us. Good evening. Um, the critical element in the Phase Two Veterans Way project is the acquisition of right of way. As we had anticipated, there has been a change in ownership of the Greensburg Commons property, and I believe our buyer has made contact with the new owner. Um, and I don't have any details of the outcome, but I saw some information today that leads me to believe that a counter proposal will be forthcoming from the buyer. So when that's available, we'll have to consider that. See if it is something that can be accommodated within the federal guidelines for property acquisition and make a decision what we do with that. Other than that, um, we're still there's three other parcels involving two other owners that's winding their way through, and um, that is just a process that has to work its way out. I think the design is well in hand. Um, I think all of the other pieces are falling well in place, and we're just waiting on the right-of-way acquisition. Our date for right-of-way uh, certification is late November. Does that sound right, Mark? Yes. Um, that will keep us on a January wedding through NDOT. If the right-of-way certification lags behind, it will back up our wedding date. Um, if we get past February, we might have to look at a right away clearing separate contract there are issues about tree removal after the first of april because of the indiana bat what we can do though or depending on the nature of the work it might be something the city could deal with on our own but that's something we'll want out of the way so that our contract can start once all the other pieces come together we still want to start next spring and hope to be finished next fall so we'll just have to see how that all comes together Any questions for Mr. May about Veterans Way? Thank you for that. How about the Lincoln Street update? Um, Lincoln Street has been a process of utility relocation work. Our contractor did, in the last couple of weeks, get a pretty good start um, on his work. The storm sewers south of um, North Street are predominantly installed now. And the utilities, um, the water utility, I think, is down to killing, to taking the water line from, I think, from Central to Walnut out of service. I think all the services have been moved over. Um, the gas company is done with their work. Uh, Duke, I believe, is either done with their work or nearly done. We do still have communication 
company cabling and fiber hanging on the old Duke poles and those utilities need to move over to the new poles. Um, I know that we have been in contact with ETC and they're, they appear to be very much on top of their situation. Frontier is on site moving their underground stuff that's in the way. Um, and I think Frontier will have to be the last to move off the new poles, off the old poles, on the new poles. Hopefully that'll come along shortly. So we're making good headway. I think our contractor will be having materials delivered tomorrow and Monday to continue working on the storm sewer. Um, and I'm thinking that we're really looking to be in good shape. There is a probability that our schedule has slipped a little bit. We were to have been done, I think, early in October. I think we're still in pretty good shape to complete this fall, but I think it'll likely be more like November that we get done. Um, and the only concern I have about the November date is weather. If we have an early winter, you can't pay when it gets cold out, not to have a good product. Um, but if we have a normal fall, then we should be okay to be finished up and still have a very good project there. I don't know if any of you have had a chance to be over there and see. It's pretty messy. There's holes here, there, and everywhere else. There's piles of dirt, and piles of stone, and piles of pipe, and all of that. Um, the neighbors all seem to be doing okay, have had very little comment from anybody. Um, I try and talk with the neighbors when I see them out and about, haven't talked with a lot of them, but they generally seem to be in good spirits. Um, I've had a couple comments already. It's really nice not having all the traffic on Lincoln Street. We knew that was coming. So. two homeowners have told me. Yeah, that's a very common occurrence on a, on a road that gets closed for a period of time. So. Um, as far as I know, school got started and that worked okay. So that, that's encouraging. I don't think that'd be the big issue, but yeah, that seems to be not a problem. Well, it was of concern with the middle school and the one-way streets and the modification that we had to make there. And it, I've had at least one comment was, you know, this having Central, this one block two-way street, really works a whole lot better for dropping my kids off at school and picking them up. So, <laughs> any questions about Lincoln Street? Thank you. How about? Then moving on to the railroad bridge okay. feasibility study. Railroad feasibility study. First, uh, let's talk a little about schedule. There is the local tracks uh, funding opportunity. Those applications have to be made no later than the 31st of August, which is I think two weeks from tomorrow. So the time is there. Um, I have not technically seen the final report of the feasibility study, but we do have what I've been calling a final draft, and I think probably nothing has really changed since then. Um, and I had submitted that to all of you. Unfortunately, it was yesterday. I didn't give you much time with it. I apologize for that. But um, the study, in a very general sense, looked at the entire city and said, where are the opportunities to get across the railroad? And as you recall, we had originally started thinking about putting a bridge over the railroad. And Strand Associates did our study, and I, we have with us this morning Bill Hawkins, who is the primary author of the report, and I'll let him speak to you here in just a minute. He, he can do a much better job of answering any questions you may have. The first thing we discovered was that because of the geometric requirements, the proximity of Main Street and McKee Street, or Randall in the case of Wilder, they are so close together that you can't meet design standards and get up and get back down in that distance. But Bill went the extra mile and looked at going under the railroad, and we discovered um, opportunities that we can get under the railroad, at least in terms of geometrics. Um, after the study got started, we narrowed the field down to three alternatives, one being Wilder Street on the east side of town, one being extending Lincoln Street to the south and connecting with Michigan Avenue, uh, 
uh, near the McKee Street intersection of Michigan, and the third being Ireland Street extended south to Ireland Street. Any of those three alternatives was considered in terms of a underpass. Uh, and after further uh, discussion, we narrowed the field down to extending Lincoln Street south and extending Ireland Street to Ireland Street. And so those were the final the two alternatives. Um, there was no clear winner, if you will. Um, the construction costs were, uh, I think, about 6% the estimated construction costs. The engineer's opinion of probable cost was, I think, 6% difference. And at this stage, um, I think it's fair to say that 6% is within the margin of error of the estimates. So they're, they're pretty nearly um, the same cost. Um, they each have some advantages and some disadvantages. Um, Lincoln Street would connect Lincoln Street to South Michigan, a major arter arterial on the south side of the city and provide a good access to a lot of residential property out off of Michigan. It would provide good access out into the southern parts of the county, the southeastern parts of the county. It would provide good access to the hospital and the ambulance service. Ireland Street also provides good access to the southern part of the country by, uh, by going out southwest 60. Um, it um, provides good access from the fire department on Ireland Street. It provides good access to the proposed new jail. Um, so it's a little of this and a little of that. There would be some differences in property impacts, a little more impact extending Ireland than there would be at Lincoln. Um, although we do have a new uh, development coming to town, Dollar General on Michigan, that that, that alignment would involve itself with. Um, those are all things that can get worked out in a detailed design. Um, without digging any deeper into it than that, I'd like to introduce Bill Hawkins to you and let you all grill Bill about <laughs> first, you know, let him let him say whatever he wants to say about this, but he can answer in a lot better detail than I can. Well, I've pretty well covered everything. <laughs> so, uh, I don't have really a whole lot to add. Uh, like you said, both uh, both of the final options just have their pros and cons. Um, you know, each one has uh, you know things that look really good, uh, but then have drawbacks to it. So um, you know, I think it'd be a tough decision moving forward on you know for the local tracks funding. Can you, can you elucidate on the pros and cons of each one? Um, well, uh, to start with uh, um, Ireland, uh, uh, I'd say the, the pros there are you're away from the creek. Uh, that's one of the, the issues that, it, that uh, comes up with the Lincoln is you're next to the creek so that you're also going to a forested area. Um, so that brings in a lot of mitigation issues, uh, tree mitigation, possibly wetland mitigation issues. Um, so you don't have any of those uh, those problems. So permitting is a lot easier on that one. Um, the, the major drawback to to Ireland Street to me or, or two is uh, the uh, proximity of the buildings uh, and properties along there. Uh, trying to preserve that while while building a wide enough corridor um, to get underneath the railroad, um, and then uh, because of that, uh, the types of walls uh, that you have to put in to get underneath. Um, the, the rather expensive walls. Um, not sure what type that they would be. They're called a cut wall. Uh, but with how close all the properties are, you can't put in a, a normal retaining wall because you can't put either you can't excavate enough to put in a, a big spread footer to prevent overturning, and you can't put any anchors back, uh, just drill anchors back into the ground uh, to help support the wall because now you're going underneath <coughs> someone else's property. So. It's basically like a sheet pile driven wall or uh, uh, drilled caissons uh, pilings that you would put in and then uh, uh, close that up. So those are probably the biggest drawbacks uh, to Ireland, uh, but also um, you know, the, the major benefit is you're, not, you're, you're hitting out a lot of permitting issues there. Uh, for Lincoln Street, again, the drawback is the permitting, uh, getting down into um, some forested area. Um, so uh, permitting is gonna be a little bit more difficult 
Um, the pros for it is it really does make a nice connection uh, for Lincoln Street uh, down in Michigan, um, you know, connecting uh, you know, a major arterial through there. Um, the, uh, uh, you wouldn't need walls going down underneath like Ireland uh, because the, the railroad is really elevated in that area as opposed to Lincoln. So uh, what you end up with is actually uh, walls that uh, you build up. Um, so your, your roadway is elevated from uh, the existing ground. Um, and it'd be like a, a, material, a mechanically stabilized wall like you see on the interstate, the keystone blocks where they build the road really straight up. Mm -hmm. It would be a wall, uh, walls on both sides like that to keep you from going into the creek. And then on the other side to keep from uh, just taking too much of that wooded area or wetland area um, and then go underneath that railroad. Um, the other drawback to that, which uh, while it's a, a, a nice uh, elevation wise, everything works out uh, really well. Um, to, in order to get the railroad around it while we're building the railroad portion of the actual overpass uh, of the railroad, uh, we have to build a temporary track. Uh, so there's a lot of fill to put in. Um, and a temporary bridge over the creek for the, the railroad that would, would eventually come out. So that, that added a lot of costs and really brought the cost of both projects in line. If you didn't have that, it, it'd, be a lot of, it'd be a lot cheaper um, alternative. But that's what really brought the costs close together. The cut wall was really expensive uh, on Ireland, and the railroad temporary alignment uh, was really expensive. So what is the property impact of the shoe fly? Uh, it appears that the shoe fly, um, to, to get the, the clearance that's needed, uh, according to the railroad, um, we would probably need just some temporary rail, uh, temporary right of way uh, from property owners along there to get that in, and then that would revert back to them. The rail line and, and any fill would be uh, taken out, and that property would revert back. Thanks for coming. Definitely appreciate it. I guess one of the questions I have is at the end of Lincoln Street, the house that is there, is mm -hmm. that property on the historic uh, That Lincoln property Street? actually is not. Uh, okay. We did a, uh, as part of it, we did a, a this, we did a, archae, a historical archaeological red flag uh, investigation. Uh, the house on the other side is, uh, on the north is side. Uh, I'm sorry, on the north side. Yes, yeah, so on the north side of, okay. of, uh, of Main Street. Uh, is eligible, uh, but the house uh, on that south side right. did not register. Now, a further investigation, of, you know, an actual historic investigation might reveal something a little different. The, I think, Ron, you alluded to that with the Dollar General store that's going in there. Is that far enough west from where, or would we have to <coughs> chop off part of that building? Well, first, let me confess that I never divulged a bill that proposed <laughs> development, so he was unaware of development. I, I believe what would happen is we would impact their stormwater detention pond, so we would have to address um, dealing with that in some fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, there are different ways that could be done. We could even go off-site downstream, I think, and detain some water or something. Um, I think of some of these things as design detail that gets worked out when you get to that point. Um, I think right now we're trying to look at the big picture. And, mm -hmm. and you know, the very first and most important thing was physically can you do it? And about what should it cost? I think those are where you start. And then, uh, the Dollar General will be impacted, um, but I think most of it will be their detention, which is actually a city requirement. We don't want to give it up. But So Ron, on the 80-20, that includes everything from right away, property? Um, well first, the 80-20 is the, the 20 is the minimum that would be required on the local tracks funding source. Right. Other funding sources could have different criteria. However, a part of the scoring on, on the local tracks application, you can garner more points by proposing to s contribute more than the 20% minimum. I think it maxes out at 25%. Okay. 
think the most extra points you can get is if you contribute 25%, so 20 to 25%. Um, NDOT has indicated they will pay all of the preliminary engineering costs, which I take to include environmental. Um, and were they proposing to pay for construction engineering? I don't recall so that. The, I don't think they have fully decided that yet. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, this, so this says the uh, preliminary engineering right away would be 100% in dock and the construction and property, property costs would be shared in so the, the right away they speak of is the right away engineering. The right away engineering. Uh, that is not the acquisition. Not the, not not the actual property, property cost. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, not the property cost yeah. that they still want to So, so the right of way acquisition, the actual property and buying of that would be 80, 80, 20 or 75, 25, somewhere in between. And the construction, and I really think construction engineering. Property cost because that's huge. Mm -hmm. That's that's big on this. That would be 8020 or 7525. That's yes. Okay. So, so I think when I when I figured it up, 20 percent would be about 1.5 million. To the yeah, I was playing with a round number of 10 for the whole 10 million for either of the two. Okay. And so two million. Right. Maybe a little less because your engineering costs. Will million and that's going to slice off some amount of that to take care of the preliminary engineering for whatever projects they approve. Well, it'd be wonderful if we could be selected, you know, for the for the safety and it's on our project list. So if we could get the state to contribute tremendously to the, to the project, it'd be certainly should pursue it. I guess, should we need to, for the application deadline of the 31st, we have to say we want this proposal going. Mm -hmm. Mayor, do you have anything you care to add before we proceed? No. Uh, it, it, once again, it's a safety issue, looks like you said. Yeah. Um, and the pros and cons, is, it's really kind of interesting. Uh, you know, I didn't even think about where they're talking about going under, which makes a little bit of sense on Lincoln. Uh, it does hit another artery of the highway where the Ireland doesn't hit it, but I looked at this piece as maybe more for our local public safety yeah. more than safety of, of the highway or, or that part of it. And right now we have the engine on the other side and we maintain going down key anyway. Yeah. Uh, that was a concern that we talked about in our meetings that, you know, McKean's, McKean's pretty narrow little street and, but, you know, we still deal with that right now with the engine that we have across the road. Uh, but again, it makes it a safer uh, issue to, to get through there uh, either way. So. One of the things I often think about the second fire station is a wonderful thing but that didn't get you back to the hospital in a timely fashion. And so the, the ability to get across the railroad when trains are coming through, um, yeah, those minutes can be life-saving literally. And, um, if we can provide that, I think it's a wonderful thing. Um, I'd like to make a pitch for Lincoln Street. I don't know, my back of my head, looking the last 25 years at Lincoln Street, we had a lot of houses that have turned into businesses. I think with this carrying on, we might end up uh, getting more houses converted over to commercial, bring up the taxes in the town, and maybe uh, you know add some more businesses to Lincoln Street, where Ireland we're going to go through property, and I don't know if we're gonna add value as far as more businesses and more tax dollars in this town, 
and obviously there's a lot more pros with, with the true concern, which is why this is brought up for safety. This is brought up purely because we want to make sure we get safe for the, the police and the, and the fire rescue and, and everyone else around. And I, I think personally, in my opinion, Lincoln Street's going to be able to check all those boxes off where Ireland I don't know if it's going to check those off as much. I, I agree wholeheartedly. As you were getting ready to say that, I was going to say, well, Lincoln Street would make sense because for the emergency ambulance, well, they can buzz right up Lincoln right up to the hospital. It would. Yeah, um, yeah that, that was my thought, too, and especially because the property would be so much less. Mm -hmm. When I was reading the study, if you did Ireland, uh, some people, uh, buildings would have to be demolished, others might have to be moved. Most of what's behind there between 46 and 421 is empty and improper right now. Mm -hmm. Would this be tall enough? If you did Lincoln, would it be tall enough for a semi? I know there's oh, a couple has, different. Okay. Yeah, it has the required clearance of okay. uh, 16 and a half feet. And I guess I think right feet. now, how many semis are coming down Lincoln Street anyway? And in uh, comparison to, I'd rather pull semis off 421 on Lincoln if there was something that happened on the crossroad, mm -hmm. rather than pull semis off of Ireland stretching out to a sure. road that they can't turn on, right. and a country road they certainly shouldn't be on. So sure. it does make that nice congruent loop. Yep. Mm -hmm. From mm -hmm. 74 to Veterans Way to Lincoln down to 421. Mm -hmm. To. Anybody care to make a motion? Ken, do you have anything to? No, um, I really don't. I appreciate the presentation, and I, I think I'm leaning, sounds like, like everybody else is for the Lincoln Street option. Um, to me, it just makes a lot of sense safety wise. Mayor, were you planning on leaving Firehouse 2 over there even after this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, then there's, I. There's no, yeah, it's. Yeah. So that what this really addresses is the ability, and, and I think that's great, well, the ability to get squad thing, back and forth. Well, the thing about Ireland, what we talked about in his report was, it wasn't sure about the water tower. Yeah. And the water tower was a big concern of his when he did that. And so, you know, is that going to disturb one of the legs? Mm -hmm. I knew that we had to have an upgrade in the sewer system okay. on that side where maybe not all so much on the other into the tracks. Uh, I think that's a, another piece of it. But mm -hmm. again, that to me, when it goes down our island, it's going to be more for our local people and not for the, the other traffic that runs through town. Sure. Of course, I'd rather not have semis on Lincoln Street either. So, except yeah. for the small area. Yeah. Yes. So, one more question before we actually have a motion. Um, so, given what we want to do with Veterans Way and finishing up Lincoln Street, are we in a financial position to to pay this if we do get awarded the, con the grant? I think from studies Umball have, has done for us, um, you know, with revenue forecasts, TIF funds through 2033, yes, we'd be able to. Technically, we pay could. That. We could um, do almost every project except this one right now without any type of grants, including the phase two of Veterans Way. But with the grants that we're getting, yeah. obviously the hat alone with Veterans Way phase two is gonna make up the difference to do this as well. So the, truth. the other thing to add to that is that there are other potential funding sources out there, one of which is your counterpart in the county, the county's redevelopment. And because of the impact that Honda has generating the need for this, it seems to me logical that they should consider helping with a project like this. And it's going to help Honda themselves. It's going to help their employees get to work in a timely fashion if they don't have to be delayed by the train. You know, it's not even anything about the safety aspects of it. Um, one of the things that we need to do is solicit input from the private sector. Does that, so does that need to be done the next two weeks? Yes, but maybe not because of the time. Um, I would have liked to have started on that earlier, but we really needed to be able to tell people what we were pursuing. 